everyone, welcome back to the Trifles Podcast. Oh my oh, god, we're back. Can't wait to share all the uh, gripping stuff that's happened to, to us. I can't wait to share all my opinions with all of you. This is my favorite. Yeah. Well, actually, both of you have dealt with disease this week. Yeah. You were supposed to be down here, we were supposed to be doing this. So let's this, do this. mine first, because mine is a non-story. Right. So, okay. Yes. Um, I was going to come down on Tuesday and I was going to go back tomorrow. So I should be in Bristol right now recording this and then we were going to do bolt action and we were meant to record something yesterday. My eldest got sick and she's never sick and I started feeling poorly and I thought if I go down to Bristol, I'm going to bring that sickness with me and I'm going to be sick on the shoot day and then I'm going to have to drive back and I'm going to feel like shit. So I thought I'll, I'll just cancel. I then did not get sick. Um, my eldest is back at school today. Um, so quite honestly, I could have come down. Um, but my natural caution and pessimism meant that I didn't, which was... Uh... I think it's a smart call because otherwise all of the Yorkscast events just turn into chicken pox parties where yeah. everyone gets yeah. sick. Yeah. Um, which always seems to happen anyway. So, but this time, well, who knows what's happened? Especially we since a... you know we yeah. would have gone out drinking, and I would have been, you know, you're the fucking best, mate. We were all those drunken close-up conversations. So, if I did have something, everybody would have. Plus, gone, so. yeah, people, all yeah. the Oxcast guys always drink in the cold outside. <laughs> that's for hours. true. We do. So that's likely to get you sick. Um, yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, apologies. But no, a non-story. Now to is the your, actual uh, story. Is your daughter feeling better, though? Is she is she She's on back the in mend? school. She's, she's all right. She's got a oh, cough. Good. But yeah, good, she was good, genuinely good. poorly for a couple of days. Right. On, honestly, um, going not going in yesterday did help a little bit because it meant I was here to, to kind of mind her. I don't want to leave her on sure. her own. But it, no, it, no. It, it was super minor. Now, I don't know why we, I suppose we led with my shit story because otherwise you can't follow with this. Because no, Sips, that... Sips has got an actual story, so well, yeah, tell it's that uh, one. I mean, it's not like uh, it's not a competition, obviously. Like, no. I, I don't want to one one up you or anything, especially but, not uh, about this. Like, man, this is... we we've been through it. Like, my 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 middle my middle daughter, my seven year old daughter, has had um, what started off as uh, like just really basic impetigo, and then turned into just raging hellish impetigo, like mm. everywhere, just open sores, weeping, and everything. It got so bad that uh, on Sunday we were just like, because she was already on antibiotics and she'd been on them for a week, and uh, it was meant to be getting better. And you know, we're not doctors. We we thought that perhaps it was getting better. And then Sunday morning, she woke up and she just had like this huge, it, it's like, it's like all like the little sores just combined into one massive sore. And we're like, God, this, this oh is not God. looking. That sounds terrifying. This is not right. Like, they're, like they're, we've never seen anything like this. We didn't really know what we were dealing with. But I mean, it was weeping like crazy. Like her, her sheets on her bed and everything were just like covered in gunk and stuff. Like when she oh woke up in God. the morning and we're like, man, this, 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 this cannot be right. Like this is maybe we're just used to it or something. But like we're gonna have to take her to see the uh, to see the doctor. Of course, it's Sunday. I don't know what it's like in in London or or Bristol shit. or whatever. But yeah, usually pretty shit. On but... on a Sunday, nothing is open here, including the doctors. They're all on call, so you have to phone like an out of hours line and speak to somebody. You get like a telephone uh, consultation. And then if they think they need to escalate, then you need to go to the hospital where they have an out of hours GP that, that works out of the hospital, like, um, you know, late at night or overnight or whatever. So I had to take her to the hospital and uh, the GP is like, oh, come on in. And she's like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, yeah, <laughs> right. It's crazy, isn't it? Like she's been on antibiotics and everything. She's like, okay, well, those those have clearly not worked. This is This is really, really bad. And like when you hear a GP say that, because normally they downplay <laughs> yeah. everything. She's like, yeah. this, is, this is pretty serious. I was and like, normally oh, like, it's probably shit. a headache and you're overreacting, go home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's like, all right, well, listen, I'm going to need a second opinion from a pediatrician because I've, I've, I've personally never seen a case this bad. Uh, Jesus. I was like, no, I know. I, like, I, I appreciate good. that. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so she's she she had a chat with us. Oh God! Took a look at my daughter and everything. But all throughout, my daughter's been 
in in pretty good spirits. Like she hasn't been like feverish, you know. She's not like she wasn't listless or anything. She was still playing. Like she was going outside, playing with like uh, my son and everything. Like she was kind of just doing normal things. Just 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 had like these crazy wounds all over uh, that were just weren't getting better. So um, so we you know we're just chatting to the GP and she's like wrote up a like a a, a paper printed it out and she's like okay well you have to go to A and E and the pediatrician will come down and, and see you there. So we go to A and E and uh, my daughter's seven right and she's like. She's not overly scared, but you go into A and E, and there's people there with blood all over them, and they're and they're you know moaning and stuff. Like it, it, I felt like we <laughs> just like stepped into like a war movie or something, you know? Like it was all <laughs> okay. there's all fucking sorts going on as as it as it does in A and E, right? It's busy, so, and I so I'm, I guess on a Sunday with the doctors closed, everyone yeah, has to go yeah. There and she's seven, shit. so she she'll stare, you know? Like if there's something that she's not familiar with, she'll just sit there looking, and I'm, I'm so I'm just like, don't stare too much, like you know that guy's. <laughs> Had a, had a few. That person looks like they're ready to to have another fight. Like Jesus. it was, it was a bit like that. Uh, and then so finally, like the nurse came out, saw to her, took like did her like obs and everything. And we went to speak to the pediatrician, and the pediatrician's like, "Holy crap, this is really something else." Like, uh, um, I know I'm not supposed to laugh at. No, I know, is but so it, funny. it is. It is like it's that. I mean, they're expect, all very good. They're very I professional. Think we're very, but we're very British, right? In our yeah. sensibilities. First of all, I guess your daughter. It doesn't seem like you know she's still playing and stuff. Seems like yeah. very normal. Yeah, and it, they it always was bizarre, you, yeah. you kind of get used to, I guess, kids being sick in various ways, having chicken pox, putting up with it. But also, yeah. it's, it's it's quite a British thing, I think, for us to downplay. Yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Even when we're like, f- f- like about to die, you know. It's, well, at the it's sake like, of looking more professional and stuff as well, I think that's a big thing too. You know, yeah. they'll say like, "Oh, you know, it's uh, it's not too bad. You're, you're just missing two two arms. Um, <laughs> yeah, we can maybe give you some new ones." So you know, like uh, they usually will downplay it. Just a take lot. these two paracetamol and go home. Yeah, but no, no this time they were fine. like whoa like it was like like kramer moments like they were just they couldn't (laughs) believe it yeah so he he looked he took a look over and he's like okay well the good news is it's not like uh in her system as such you know it's still very on on the skin but it's not it it hasn't spread to her blood or anything otherwise she'd have like a massive temperature fever uh and then you know it it, it could become sepsis and we were just like okay well unbelievable that that is really bad uh so she's like so he's like well we're gonna have to admit her so um you know you'll need to make some arrangements so i was like yeah of course went home got her some stuff and and everything and then i had so i had to i had to stay at the hospital for a couple of days with her like swapping over with my wife during the day and stuff and uh we we get up to the we get to the ward and everybody it's like a, it's a it's a children's ward right so everybody's super nice like really helpful and everything they're getting us snacks and everything because it was like ten o'clock at night by the time all this like by the time we'd been through everything and spoken to everybody yeah. and stuff it's pretty late so she was getting pretty tired but you know like she was still sort of like. Yeah, everything is everything is new and kind of exciting or whatever because she's in the hospital and she's staying over and, and all this stuff. So the nurse comes in. She's like, do you, you guys want some snacks or anything? Have you eaten? I was like, oh, I'll take anything. I'm, I'm starving sort of thing. <laughs> and she's like, what what about you, sweetheart? Do you want some ice cream or some jello or whatever? And my, my daughter's like, yeah, yeah. She's like, which one? And she's just like, yeah. So she's like, oh, both. And she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So off she goes. She comes back with like apple juice, ice cream, jello. My daughter is just like going going to town. And then like five minutes later, she barfed. She just like it was just it was too much. It was too much. It was just too much excitement. Just too much excitement, and then too oh much God. jello and ice cream and apple juice. Like it just you know what, absolutely I, I got bet, her. I guarantee you that will be what she remembers from this entire. Experience. I wonder. Yeah, I wonder. Like, the, it's always something like that. Like I, the being sick is something kids always seem to remember. My kids always seem to remember yeah. occasions they were sick. So they're going to remember, do you remember when you went to hospital? Yeah, I ate way too much ice cream. I remember being sick. That's what she's going to take away from it. Thank right. goodness. Oh, man. It's, yeah. it, it's, she's got to remember it, the worst part of it, I bet. We've, it's been crazy. We've been so worried. But the 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 nice part of it, if you can have a nice part of, of all this, was we, we, had to, we had to just sit with her in... Uh, in a room she was in an isolated room which was quite nice too because she was contagious yeah. they didn't want yeah. her on the ward with uh you know potentially passing Vulnerable it on to like kids. other kids yeah. and stuff of and course. then with covid going around and stuff too there was a lot of covid on the ward so they wanted to keep her away from that too but i mean man we did everything 
we were doing like guessing games. They had a they had uh, iPads that they would bring in. So as soon as the other iPad ran out of batteries, they'd have another one to swap in. She was watching TV on there. She was doing crosswords. Like we were, we were hiding like her teddy bears around the room and guessing where they were and stuff. And it was like it was it was really nice to just actually. So when you have a lot of kids, you don't always get a ton of time to spend yeah, of course. a ton of time with just one. So we we managed to spend just a shitload of time with her, which was really good for her as well. I think she really enjoyed it, you know, with the with the with the with the backdrop of her. It's like a mini holiday. Not feeling too well, with, but yeah, I think I think she she did kind of see it. Yeah. Yeah. she hasn't been to school for like a week and a half, so she's been pretty happy about that too. So like, there's definitely some silver linings in there if you if you can like search for them or whatever. But uh, man, the whole experience has just been such a. It's just super draining because you're just oh. worried all the damn time. God, you know, yeah, like, I bet. You're just you're just hoping that it just clears up and it's finally now clearing up and it's actually really satisfying to see it clearing up. But then you're you're thinking, I wonder if it'll come back. I wonder if it's you know what if it's something that will just keep coming back. Like all the the usual well, the, yeah, parental oh worries and stuff. So we'll just have to see. She's her antibiotic course is uh, is done tomorrow and uh, it's for the most part it's all looking really good. But there's still like one spot that's not looking too great so if it's still bad we'll have to take her in again and potentially they'll have to uh do to to do other stuff maybe more antibiotics or something and then uh hopefully we just get the results back as to what it actually is or the combination of things that it, it could have been because they think that it was impetigo with maybe some chicken pox or something else laced in you know what i mean so mm. i don't know we'll see yeah. Christ. But yeah, oh, well, like, thank yeah. insane. Yeah, it was insane. But uh, right. she's 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 home now. She's she's doing a lot better. She she was she was always like you know in in good spirits and and bright and everything. Uh, but now that it's clearing up even more, so she's back to um, just being her 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 usual self, which is which is good, right? Because mm. you when they're not themselves, you're just like, oh my god, please just come back to being yourself straight away. Like it's the worst worst feeling. It mm. it, it it's just such a such a worry. But it's nice that we seem to be like on the on the right track now, you know. God, and what yeah. a stress for you to have to deal with. Mate. I know, I know. Oh, yeah, God. crazy, crazy. Yeah, so we're uh, we're so we're we're just sort of getting getting back to normal, which is which is nice. Well, have you been um, watching any uh, any TV? Did you watch The Last of Us, either of you? No, I haven't. I haven't watched much TV. I've heard very TV. good things about it. Actually, it's good. The Last of Us. Yeah, it's I heard good. it was good as well. Yeah, I heard some M- good Mrs. About F it. said it was too scary. So. It was. It was. She was. She had to watch it with half an eye. She was doing a crossword, kind of just really peer, peering up. Yeah, she was terrified. I found the. Does I she... found the game quite scary. I had to stop yeah, playing yeah. it past a certain point. I, I mean, there's all those bits where bit much. if the zombie thing gets Joel, it's sort yeah. of a pretty hideous. Like they tear his neck open and stuff. Like there was oh, almost that... like Dead Space style animations like that. That, so. that, star, that side of it doesn't bug me so much. It's just the it's just the tense like unknown, you know? Like when right. I, the point I got to up in the game was when you go to the city and you're just kind of let you're left to just go into all these big old abandoned office buildings and yeah. stuff. And that that got me. I was just like I just don't want to do this. Like they're, but they're, you gotta. they're all of all of the buildings are are like all empty and spooky and you can hear like uh zombies, you know, moaning and groaning around every corner and stuff. And yeah. I just thought, "Nah, I can't do this." Well, they've got them uh they've got them done really well in this. They're genuinely scary. I mean, mm. they're sort of like you you know, it's not like, "Oh, it's just a zombie. We'll just dome it and carry on going you know hit, yeah, hit, yeah. It, hit it with a rake these things are like properly terrifying uh zombies well i think that's that's part of the element yeah right? of course like, but like but, nothing is scary if you're powerful right like yeah it, like if you have if you're trying to control something and it's very sluggish and not responsive i mean that's classically part of the original sort of resident evil style was that it was so it was kind of clunky like the controls and it meant that it was kind of you weren't able to react quickly to things to have this feeling of safety in the yeah. game, right? Well, it, it's I, like um, it's like being in a dream, isn't it? When you're you're r- trying to run and you can't run, um, you're sort of running through treacle. I guess it feels like that. But, yeah, or I you mean, start but, flying while you're running. I, right. that, that's a weird one too. But really slowly, and you're barely yeah. lifting off the ground. But so the thing with traditional zombies was it was about the real monster is inside. You know, you're the monster, and the people turn on the, each other sort of thing. This is just no, it's the monsters. Like it, it is mm. just. The monsters. So I, I forgot about the character. I think it's Tess. Um, right. Well, no spoilers for people. Tess who it's, who not, have, it's, who not a, it's not a spoiler. It's episode because a lot two. of people won't. What well, again? A lot of people won't have played the game and right. won't no, know. Yeah, that's true. Right. But I'm just saying, um, I completely forgot. She's in episode one. She's like Joel's sort of 
partner, and yeah. I'd completely forgotten that she was in the game. I was like, oh, I think right. they put her around into the TV show, but no, I'd completely forgotten. Um, oh, well, so apparently yeah, she, that's she, the she, other thing. It's a very faith. What well, so far, it's a faithful, at least half faithful, shot for shot kind yeah, of. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. good attempt to remake the story in film, which I think if It'll they stray didn't from do, eventually, the backlash to, would be. Right? Well, I think that hopefully people have learned from issues people have had with with previous remakes where the community is like this didn't happen in the game and that's all they can talk about you know, yeah, once yeah. they once they've identified a difference so there will there are and there will be differences right but i think the story is there there's already a, pretty detailed there's another they just need uh, to redo it another show that they're appar- uh, apparently working on i don't know much about it but apparently they're working on a, a fallout tv series as well which will be another one based on a game and then God. i guess the witcher series is loosely based on a, based on, a on game. the books more than it's anything. based based on the books yeah. more so but i suppose you have imagery from yeah. games as well to compare to what you're seeing in the See, show or whatever it's funny what you're saying lewis about the fan base reacting and stuff like that i i was i was talking about this actually on stream the other day and the people forget and because they're young, a lot of the people that, you know, listening to this, a lot of them seem to be in their 20s from the emails that I get. Yeah. You guys were not around when Lord of the Rings first came out. You don't know, man. To see the You don't know what we've seen, yeah. From the, the hardcore Tolkienites who were like, they got this wrong! And nobody gave a shit. And no. I don't think anybody should give a shit if they change something in a fucking TV show that's based on a game. If they say, well, we're, we're going to get rid of these key character of Joel, he's going to be played by someone else. So, well, fair well, enough. Okay. You can complain. Uh, but- I, I talked about this many times, but my opinion is that when people come along to these properties, they want to make their own mark on it. They want to make their own stamp. They can't just leave the source material alone. They have to fucking in- insert themselves in some way and change things for the worse, right? And Lord of the Rings Give me an example. was not a great book, and it was an improvement on the book in many ways. The book we had long, boring bits. It was out of date. It's 50, 60, 70 years old. It's, God, it's, it's ancient, Lord of the Rings, I, relatively I, I, speaking. I, I, and I, I like so much came after it that them. it had to change. I was a right? kid when I read them, though, to be fair. I, I struggled with Lord of the Rings books when I read them. And uh. I, I just think there was uh, there was better stuff. Um, and... And, and so, yeah, but look, but that was changed for the better. I think many things have been changed for the worse, like the Wheel of Time series on Amazon Prime. Perfect example of just unnecessary changes that would not that made oh, it God, literally I never, worse. I totally it, forgot that that even existed. Like, like there's, it was and there's right. tons and tons and tons. So many, so many, so many TV shows. I wasn't are a huge fan of the worse. books either. To be fair, like, th- in I general, quite long. A, some sort of in general, a remake. Is worse. Like, so give me an example of uh, a remake where the director like put their own spin on it and ruined it for you. Well, I just did, but there's, there's no, no, there's... but the, the the Wheel of Time. They had to compress a huge series of books into a what ten episodes or whatever. Like that's always going to happen. No, one book into ten episodes. Yeah, and but it's people huge. Would have compressed one book into a movie just fine. It was yeah, just but people always the complain. They always complain. They well, always, but... always, always say, "How could you leave this out?" And they got this. Right, character I got an wrong example. And... I got an example for you: the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Here's some good old uh, time Wild West uh, stories that have been tarnished. But no, I'm just joking. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Well, I think I think every everyone complains about basically every. Uh, anime that's been made live action, like Death oh. Note. The, 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 the they did a action. live action Death Note. Like I know yeah, like about so Death Note. I've never seen the anime or the I live actually, action. Th- that's something I have in common with anime fans, and because I always complain when they make anime films as well. So, well, yeah. I guess the point is though that The Last of Us, your wife's watching it, and she could watch that without having even known about the game. Right? Yeah. She could have watched the Death Note without even realizing it was an anime, right? And and enjoyed it if it was good, but it wasn't good. Yeah. Right. And I think that's that's the problem people have. People, everyone's going to complain. Sure, some people have complained about every single thing, right? Regardless of whether it's good or bad. I'm not not doubting that. I'm just saying that if stuff's good, people will quickly forgive it, and it will pass as a thing that people recommend to each other, and people will enjoy it without even knowing the original, because that's what it's for. You know, The Last of Us is not. It, it's hoped that the fans of it will watch it, but it's for people like your wife who who haven't heard of it. Oh, I really can, like it, can it accept well. it on its own as a horror TV show. But right? I think it's also for most people who are yeah. not going to get up in arms about slight changes. And it's a bit like any community. I think the, uh, the, the loudest will always be the most ardent fans. But honestly, that's always a tiny minority. I, I think, genuinely um, believe that. 
the with the last of us um most of the opinions i've seen uh of it are from people who i know have played the game because most of the people that i follow on twitter and stuff like that are gamers but uh i have read as well that even for people who haven't read the game the show is just Produced well enough that it's yeah, it's, it's it doesn't good. matter. Yeah, I mean, we're, you we're can just jump right time into of recording. It's fine. We're two episodes deep, so this may well change. Sure, um, by the time this podcast yeah. goes out, but I and I'm not going to watch it until the whole series is out. Yeah, because I, I if I get into it, I'm going to want to watch more. I don't like yeah, watching yeah. stuff week by week. Really, it's annoying. And, <laughs> and but, but you know, I I think we also though you've got to understand that the video game community is one of the most vocal and critical that's one way to put it very for critical, sure. and, yeah. and 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 there's a lot of people have played this game to yeah, the point yeah. where everyone who's played this game and watches it is going to have an opinion and therefore when they're making this tv show i feel like i'm like the last of minds. us in the sense that i'm like one of the last people to actually play the game because i found the start of it kind of too scary to to carry on you know <laughs> like i'm yeah i am the last of us because i well haven't done. played it. yeah do you like that yeah i do but i think it's also been long enough since the first game where yeah like you said pflax a lot of people have sort of forgotten what happened so i mean it was know. like 2013 or something it came out something like that oh it was my like, god it was that's so long game. ago it feels like a like a lifetime ago it is i was talking to ben about it yesterday and he said he started trying to play it and the gameplay just felt really bad and really dated well and, yeah it um, will do though it's an older game right like i mean it's not that old but Old I enough. guess what I'm trying to say is that you don't feel like you have to play The Last of Us before watching it, or vice versa. I, he might have been uh, he might have been a bit miffed as well because 2013. I don't know if there would have been like tons of loot boxes and battle passes and stuff back then. There so maybe right. maybe he loaded it up and he was like, <laughs> "Shit, where is my trickle? How of do I spend money on <laughs> this? Where's, where's for this the game? cosmetics in this game? I need a steady yeah. trickle of achievements uh, here, or I'm not going to have any fun. So what's going I on? I want all the zombies to be wearing top hats. <laughs> Where, how do I make that happen? Hey, what, uh, is there no Christmas event for this game? This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> this is garbage. Uh, so hey, I listen, I was lying uh, uh, before God, when no, uh, right. Flax, you said, have you watched much TV? And I said, no, but actually I have watched a little bit of TV. Uh, oh. Not the kind of TV that you guys would uh, would think either. <laughs> I was in the hospital, of course, for a couple of days. Little kid TV. So I've been watching, my daughter is really into this show called miraculous right now have you ever seen it Ooh. no i'm gonna look it up it's a <laughs> french it, i think it i think it originated as a french kids show about superheroes uh, okay the, the lead superhero is uh, a girl who turns ladybug. into ladybug and she She's has covered a, in spots yes and she has uh, appropriate there's another superhero <laughs> that she <laughs> kind of teams up model. with called cat noir which is of course black cat um, I see this and uh, a cat girl, and he oh, no. he looks like a just uh, like a young whippersnapper oh. who dresses up like a, a cat, Batman, cat man sort of thing. Okay. And uh, and so the the show is a kids show, but I mean it's interesting enough. Like I I didn't actually find it impossible to watch. Like uh, I found myself at times actually asking my daughter questions about how everything <laughs> okay. hung together because <laughs> there's a couple of like little underlying storylines that are right. kind of interesting. So listen to this, okay? Try to wrap mm. your heads around this one. Okay, I'm ready. When Ladybug isn't Ladybug, okay? When she's just a normal girl, She's in love with uh, this guy who's in her class who just happens to be Cat Noir when he turns into a superhero. But they don't know okay. this about each other, okay? So right. she is in love with this guy in non-superhero form, but doesn't realize that Cat Noir, who she fights crime with side by side very often... Very Shakespearean. Uh, is uh, not... This. is not they, he, She can't do the link, right? She doesn't know that it's him because... Uh, she just has no concept that it could be him sort of thing. And Cat Noir is in love with Ladybug, okay? But not with her as a girl, right? Right. So she's in love with him as a boy, and he's in love with her as a superhero. And oh. so there's times where <laughs> Cat Noir, for example, will visit the girl just as a girl, you know, because she, she just happens to get into, like, lots of, like, uh, you know, scrapes, scrapes and whatever. Yeah. And uh, and and he'll be like not interested in her at all, and likewise for her sort of thing. He she'll just be like, no, I'm not interested or whatever. But then when he's just a boy, she's like 
head over heels in love with them sort of thing. And then when she's a superhero, he's the same. He's just like that's quite a, that's pining quite a complicated for all the time. thing for right. a little kid show. I know. Like my seven-year-old daughter follows this avidly and is just like, this is amazing. Like, oh my God, <laughs> they are in love, but they're not and stuff. And so they have all these friends that uh, like that can turn into superheroes as well. And there's a bad guy who happens to be the boy's father but he doesn't know this either. So the boy that turns into Cat Noir, his dad, is the big <laughs> bad guy called Hogmoth, okay? Oh, sure. Sure. And uh, and so what he does is he kind of like um, corrupts moths, <laughs> okay? So they start off as like these like, you know, white, normal looking moths, and then he corrupts them and turns like, he like evilizes them, okay? <laughs> and sends them out. So he, he, he scans Paris right. on a daily basis I just, and sorry, he looks, just, he just, looks for just, people who are just grounding myself in reality. You're telling me pissed about off. this show. Yeah. Okay. So he's he's looking or he's scanning Paris for people who are pissed off for some reason. And then when he right. detects that somebody has some sort of grievance or whatever, he sends out one of these corrupted moths to them. The corrupted moth lands on them and then turns them into a supervillain temporarily oh. they don't realize what they're doing but all of a sudden they have a link into this guy and he can order them around that's pretty cool his big thing is that he wants to get ladybug and cat noir's miraculous which is what gives them their super powers so on ladybug it's like earrings and on cat noir it's his watch or something and there's like these little dudes that live in these things midi chlorians I, I don't know and they they make them powerful or whatever so he wants to get those things because he wants to become like all powerful so he uses like random citizens of paris to try to, to to try to get this done i mean quite honestly you would be hard pressed to find someone in paris who didn't appear to have a grudge right on all the occasions it's I've true been there, so yeah yeah easy yeah. easy super villain territory there. yeah believable right. there are lots of grievances yeah, yeah. so believable so you he has his he's, free? He I has, am furious. he has his pick of the the litter on that one for sure and uh and then once the superhero Heroes defeat the person who's been corrupted by one of these moths. Uh, Ladybug has like this, I don't know, it looks like a little jewelry box or a yo-yo. It's like a yo-yo with a box and she can capture the corrupted moth in it and then it transforms it back to an uncorrupted moth. But then, very satisfyingly, magic comes out of this uh, process and turns everything that was ruined by their fighting and whatever in Paris back to normal. Mm, and then God. they just carry on I with see. their lives until the next so episode. Do, do, you, do you suppose that shows like this, because I've, I've had an email about something we spoke about the other week, and I'm just, I'm trying to tie it into this because I'm sure there's a big adult fandom Oh, I'm sure there is. Yeah. TV I'm show. sure there is. Yeah. So we spoke about Thomas the Tank Engine either last week or the week before. I don't know if you guys remember. And the Thomas the Tank Engine fandom, uh, who I think they call themselves Steamies or something like that. Steamies, right, right, right. Something right. Like Steamers. That. <laughs> either way, <laughs> this is from a guy James who has. Uh, he says, "Hi. Let me preface this by saying this is not a rant email." I'm shedding some light on the stuff you talked about in the last episode. I'm a steamer. I am. I am a prominent member of the TTTE community. Right. Now, I had to think for a second. Thomas I didn't the remember. Tank Engine. Indeed. Yeah. But it, right, it, right, he's right. also, the subject is Thomas Drama. That's what he's called it. Right. Right. Um, and even though I've taken some time away from the Twitter sphere, I, I think eventually hear about the Most of it is drama. around Gordon, right? Gordon was well, kind of the problematic engine. James well, sadly, James was like a bit of a like a goof. He would goof up a look, lot, but Gordon was actually dickheads. vindictive. They were all dickheads. If you watch the show, and I'm sure you have, with your kids, a couple of times, all of the yeah. trains, all of the trains are little shits. Uh, I don't all well, not not the the one I remember watching the most when I was younger. My because I had a younger brother. He was six years younger, and he was really into the the uh, Thomas the Tank Engine one that was narrated by Ringo Starr. You know, the one with the with the Thomas. with the little models. Yeah, Thomas was struggling to get up the hill. The yeah. fat controller was not happy. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one. and the and and I don't right. remember the trains being too bad in that. Well, one. if you watch it now, like a lot of these kids show, Mike the Knight, Peppa Pig, Thomas the Tank Engine. Oh, I haven't was seen that your little, little kids. Of Mike the that was your impression of Ringo. So, sorry, that was your Ringo impression. Is he that did a the voice? No, is that? Just I forgot that. I'll I forgot that it he did. That. Yeah, he did. No, yeah. it was great. It was oh, honestly, okay. I got it. I got it from that. that I just, and I'd forgotten that he did it. He did. Carry on. Oh, sorry. Carry on. Um, so he says, I eventually. This uh, James says he eventually hears about the latest drama. Drama, 100% in inverted commas. These are his words. Is a weekly occurrence. 
I think it's a common thing for most fan bases to have a wide range of people from different paths of life. The comments made about some of the community having a sexual aspect to it is 100% true. And a few friends and I have spent years trying to rid Twitter of people like this. It can range it's from a sexual human aspect uh, to to towards the Thomas the Tank Thomas Engine the fandom. Tank Engine. Yes, dude. Yes, because we we said I was like, I guarantee you some people are fucking into this that are perverts about. What Thomas do they the have pictures tank. of Thomas the Tank Engine like in a bra and suspenders or something like? Well, what? I... it can uh, it can range from humanizing the trains right. to straight up grooming and pedophilia. It Jesus is a real problem Christ. that cannot be simply fixed by getting these people, as he puts again in inverted commas, banned off of Twitter. I joined and took part in this fandom to see behind the scenes material, production information, and other interesting things from a little known show called Tugs, which is not made by the same production company as Thomas the Tank Engine. I don't know what Tugs is. Not to be reporting people to the police a few times a year. I hope you have a good year. You've got me through a lot of tough times. So sorry Christ. to hear, James. Yeah, sorry to hear that you've... Uh, you, it sounds like you have become your own version of a superhero. Yeah. Fighting crime in uh, areas where I didn't even realize crime could occur. So there you go. Indeed. indeed. <laughs> Fucking hell. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your phone or computer. What kind of things have you been shopping for recently? Oh, why well, I've been buying random stuff um, online. I've been I've been getting into art, doing art again. I've been looking into mono printing, and I've been buying like gel jelly pads and paper from random yeah. places. And Honey, this week Honey popped up and save me some money. It's, it scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best ones it finds to your car automatically. You don't have to cut coupons out of books. Well, um, uh, well hold on there, young man. <laughs> That's the best part of coupons, is the, the cutting them from the books. Uh, you said you're into art. Is that correct? That's correct, Would you yes. draw me like one of your French girls while I'm <laughs> lying on I'd a bed of, of coupons? <laughs> lying, <laughs> reclining on a bed of coupons. Oh, wow. Well, that's I suppose that's that's all they're good for now because you know you can just get digital that's, ones. That's true. I, I will lie on them as, as I would on a on a bed of, of garbage. Dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> because with this new application, computerized application, honey, it makes it much simpler. Is it that does. what you're saying, young man? It does. Uh, you know, so it doesn't just work on desktops. It works on your phone. Uh, you can activate it on Safari and save money. It, it's it's fully set up. So. Uh, you can get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Triforce. Uh, if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on savings. Uh, so do yourself a solid, support the show, and uh, joinhoney.com slash Triforce. I will. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I think it's hard to say what... When you say these fandoms, right? I think I think people can be casual viewers and enjoy like magical girl animes, especially like like all magical girls. That's that's kind of what this ladybug show is, right? Like it's kind of a it fits into the the Sailor Moon type, yeah, theme, right? yeah. And a lot of people enjoy these young. Cozy it's like kids a shows. like a teenage. Um... It's like yeah. it's almost like you like little. It's for little kids, but teenagers. You could imagine watching it as well for like the sort of like almost romance aspects. Of a lot it or of whatever. adult, yeah. Women, I'm not saying it's really necessarily men, but a lot of adult women get a lot of coziness out of watching these cutesy, like, cuddly kids shows and would never even think about joining a fandom of it necessarily, right? I think you have to be, it has to go something deeper if you're going to go yeah. into the, I, if it's, like, if, go into, if my kids are watching a, it, a I don't mind it being on. I don't actually mind it too much. I would never seek it out on my own, though. Like, um, you know, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like be, interested enough to go back and, and watch mm. episodes or whatever on my own sort of thing like i, I just no i guess it's like I put me, up it's with like it. if i'm playing yeah. if i'm playing a game right i will if i'm into that game at like if i into that game i'm i play that game and i put it down right if i really like the game i might join the the subreddit right sure if i really really like the game i might join the discord yeah you know Oof. and then i might if i really love it i might actually read the posts do you know what i mean yeah like that, that's kind of like the level and, and i suppose like at a certain point I, I'm not someone who is who's ever really gotten active in any communities, really. Like, no. even if I'm a big fan of something, I, I and, tried. And... I did get involved in one community, and I actually ended up bringing it down. Was it Dota? <laughs> okay. This is this right. is a mildly was it Eve? story. No, it wow. wasn't Eve. Sadly, I failed in my quest to bring Eve down. This was um, probably about three or four years ago. Wow, um, like kind of recent. 
Yeah. I thought you were going to I thought you were going to hit us on. with like a story from like, you know, pre uh um, No, this is this was uh announcer pack was, on Dota or something. No, 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 no. Oh, we can talk about that in a second as well because oh, obviously right, something's sure. happened re- regarding that in the last few weeks. Um so I had we had a, a Markov chain bot when I when I used to play Eve and I was a, 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 on something awful with a bunch of guys that I knew, we had an IRC channel like a lot of people did. This was before Discord, people used IRC, and we'd all chat in there and we had all kinds of bots running in there. And one of them was a Markov chain bot. And what a Markov chain bot does for anyone that doesn't know is it pulls together sentences and phrases from everything you've said in that channel and then auto generates posts of its own that can be very funny, can be very surreal, can just be complete nonsense. And over time, it develops a syntax and it starts to say things. And you can identify, especially people on a Discord or an IRC channel who've got a big voice and a very, you know, it's them. So you sort of see the Markov bot generate a sentence and it's like, this clearly, it's pulled this from X user. And it's very funny. So we had this bot and it kept going down. And it would be down for quite a long time. Like it would be down for like a week or two. Right. And it would come back and it would have forgotten everything and it was like not working very well. So I'd found this thing on 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 some Reddit or I think I just Googled it. And they had a community. So I joined the Discord and I asked a very simple question. Um, hi there. Um, I've read the um I mean for for a start, the landing page was about three screens of rules. Right, and this is for a community of about fifteen people. So I immediately <laughs> thought right. this is not good. Yeah, and so I just asked the question. I said, "Hi there. I, I've read the rules and everything, and I know what you said about the Markov bot. Sometimes it'll be down, and there's nothing you can do about it. But is it normal for it to be down for two weeks? That all. So all I was asking was, has it broken? Is it something on my end that's broken, or is it literally down for? And it's been two weeks, and you're well aware of it. And there's nothing that can be done, and we'll just have to sit tight and wait. The guy." responded with this big load of text telling me to read the rules and then banned me from the discord wow so i went insane so then i went on twitter and i complained at them and said look i don't know what your problem is i said in my message i understand that it might that your rules say do not ask why it's down it will sometimes be down i'm just asking for a clarification is two weeks normal or is it something i've done to break the bot and he's like, that's it, we're shutting the whole thing down. And he shut Jeez, the whole project right. down because of this. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> so the wow. whole community, the Discord folded, they got off Twitter, huge posts blaming me, claiming that we'd sort of brigaded them and all this Man. kind of stuff. I had literally just said- Maybe you got a gift there. Go ask the KKK <laughs> some questions, Flax. <laughs> it was like, I, I, my, my question, as far as I can see it, was you just saying- You guys haven't been burning uh, anyone lately. <laughs> <like, laughs> <it's, it's> <laughs> shut the whole thing down. Shut it down. down. Get the cone hats. We're, we're closing shop. That's it's it. charge of the rules. We only lynch <laughs> once a year. Why are you asking? Holy shit, so, man. Yeah, but, but it was Jesus. like the, the, the response to- a, a literal question just asking for clarification because the 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 fact that they had on the on the disc was not very clear it was literally like shut up and if it's not working just shut up and it's like i'm just asking is this normal or have we broken it because we were hammering it like we were using it a lot people were using it a lot and i was just worried something somewhere had broken was it Holy us was crap, it something man. we did Dude just straight up started screaming at me. I love, me, I, 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 I right. love a documentary of the days leading up to that point uh, from the other guy's perspective <laughs> yeah. because he must have just been hanging by a end, thread at that point. End of the tether. Holy Absolutely fuck. final straw. Yeah, yeah. But um, so uh, it's funny because these communities, even very small ones like this guy talking about the Thomas the Tank Engine community, it's not a huge community. No, We're no, not no. millions of people. Um, but even then, there's there's drama and people falling out and all this shit. Oh yeah, it's like mad. it's crazy. Like it is. It was, I, I'm I do post on some discords right occasionally. I'll have a question or I'll have a theory or and I'll write something about a board game or something. But the, but when people don't know who I am, and especially if I'm not if I've not got a decent like rank on that server, because normally I'm like the lowest pleb tier right when right. I join these servers, they someone with like an orange name comes over the top of me. And usually is pretty aggressively, authoritarianly like rude. Yeah. If not, if not directly rude, yeah. like like kind of ruder than I would used to expect them to be. And I think that's partly because in their culture, maybe they're not English, maybe they're you know Eastern European or Australian. Or I'm talking to some people all over the world in these things, and I don't know who they are. But right. I think it is. It, I have noticed an element of 
people just dismissing anything I've said quite it, quite rudely. Yeah. Um, many times before, and it hasn't necessarily stopped me, but it's certainly been like unexpected, right? Maybe it's because I'm used to people. I guess. Okay, I guess on the Yogg's Office Discord, everyone's quite polite with each other and quite nice well, to each other. And we also, you're the other. boss, too, so I don't think anybody's <laughs> yeah, really Yeah, I guess gonna... that's the other scary... So maybe I'm used to you're people, used to, like... You're used to people... People sucking up sucking to up me. To you. Is that what yeah, you're saying? It's it. like that. It's like you're, you're like Mr. Burns when he sells the nuclear power plant, and they, he goes to the bar, and they all start making fun of him, and he's like, my God, Smithers, they're not afraid of me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's you. Yeah, that's what it is. Maybe. That's what it is. I see, it was interesting because... Um, talking about how people have these speech patterns because i think it, it, if you became aware of how you spoke to other people it would be you saying it was my fault it would throw you off what? no, no. I, don't think so. I was when you were telling me that i thought it was someone on the inside of your server who didn't like the way it was mocking no. them was like was like taking it down no it was like ddosing it or shutting it down secretly in the night you know no or not at all because that all. would have been in my experience what the, the kind of like petty little sabotage that might have happened well we ban people community. like that from my discord pretty promptly we're pretty uh well you don't know there might be like insiders though like people who were like secretly sabotaging from within oh, so like spies are. like my, spies, my main mod has probably been sabotaging me for the last eight years god bless him god bless yeah, that i watched man. a couple of tv shows this week i watched a thing <laughs> called <laughs> like uh, i think it's, it's i can't remember what it's called physical 100 i think it's called. Oh. yeah it's just it's just got on netflix it's like the idea is it's like a real life squid game okay oh, right, where okay. there's they take a hundred. You mean Lydia? Like, uh, no. <laughs> they like they take a hundred muscly bodybuilders, both men and women. Why didn't from, they call me? Well, from I Korea, right? Yeah. Oh, um, from Korea. Okay. And then they make them so crawl through like, really, really, really small pi drainage pipes to see who who's the most. Well, you get stuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I won't. I won't spoil it. But the first challenge is just hanging off of um, some monkey bars, right? right? Oh. So they've got a hundred guys like. Was well, like guys a pit of massive. spikes underneath it or something? No, it's just a pool. They don't of water. die. Oh. Um, no dying. But, but you know, they they get only half of them make it through. So they've oh. done it. They've done it like Squid Game. They keep. Contestants just keep talking like, "Oh, we're on Squid Game," kind of thing. Like, you know, right, it's like right. kind of like this this running joke. But they've got basically anyone who's anyone in the Korean like fit circles. They've got like fitness YouTubers. They've got oh, like okay. national like Olympic Olympic winners. They've got dancers. They've got like you know, and you name it. Like, there's like a car dealer who's like ripped. You know, <laughs> this this kind of stuff. Nice. And there's like a, a, a famous kickboxer. He's like the face of it, kind of thing. And he's like number one hundred. Um, kind of thing, you know. So there's like a bunch of, a bunch of people competing for this, this honor and cash reward. And I, I don't know. I, I, it, it was the whole first like hour of it was just introducing the hundred people. So yeah, it was, well, it's kind would of be, like I this. Suppose, you know yeah. how in these reality shows they normally have this long bit where they slowly introduce everyone. Yeah, there were a hundred people to introduce. Jesus. It took fucking ages. The introduction stuff uh, wears thin on me after a while because I, I know you guys know that I watch uh, Married at First Sight from time to time, and uh, I'd say like the time first two or three episodes of that show are. I find tedious because it's it's all the the introductions and and like the their their weddings but it's it's two strangers getting married sort of thing so it's not really that interesting either cuz like the interesting bits of the show are or when the drama starts you know like the people start screaming at each other at the dinner tables and dinner parties and stuff like that not so much the introduction stuff but the introduction stuff I find is like really long-winded because there's like 12 couples or something right so they mm. everybody has to have their 5 minutes in the in the sun sort of thing you know where they have to get married and their family has to come and everybody's very right. friendly and well, stuff. you know what you guys should watch then you should watch masked singer there's no introductions other than them in a costume yeah yeah so but the, but the the issue is and you would have this if you watch this with your kids uh sips uh and maybe even you my kids probably would yourself. actually like that I, I, right I but, think they would. so so my kids really love the show for the first couple of episodes and then once they start revealing the celebrities behind the masks after a couple of times, they're like, I have no idea who these people are, no, and I've I, lost interest. Yeah, be the so problem, me and Mrs. Yeah. F, obviously, we're older, so we're able to guess who they are. Here's the people who've been revealed so far this season. Okay. Ghost was Chris Kamara. Who? Right? 
Oh, they, yeah. From he's the guy uh, goes, football. Uh, I don't know, Jeff. He's the guy who's like, <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he's that guy. I don't know, Jeff, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Right. He's, he's, he's recognizable. He, he's sure. recognizable. Piece of cake was Lulu. Lulu, I know. L- Lulu. Right. Lulu. I've heard of her. But she's old. She's most older people don't now, know yeah. who the fuck Lulu is. If they're below 30, I'd suggest they might sure. not know who Lulu okay. is. Then she's Cat 74. Mouse, she's, she's, she's old. She's like my mum's age. She was great. Um, Cat and Mouse was, that was a, that was a duo. Martin Kemp and Shirley Kemp. Do you know who they are? No. So Martin, Martin Kemp, Kemp was in... is a uh, Spandau Ballet guy, right? Spandau Ballet and He's Andy in Stenders. everything now. His son is sh- uh, his son is starting a TV career now as well, right? right? He's been in a bunch of stuff too. So, and Shirley Kemp was in the band Pepsi and Shirley in the 80s. Right. Okay. So, Shirley Kemp okay. has really not been famous for 40 years or so. <laughs> and, and Martin Kemp was like he couldn't sing because he was he played an instrument in Spano Ballet. I think it was a bassist. Yeah, but he was um, in EastEnders. Um, he was uh, Steve Owen. Uh, was it Steve? He was in EastEnders, which uh, he was which in EastEnders, gave, which gave him another big burst. He of... was in EastEnders probably fifteen or twenty years ago. True, I want to yeah, say. But all right, and then rubbish. That was the play. The the, the the costume was rubbish. They were literally in a bin with a load of rubbish coming out. Stephen Hendry. Do you know who Stephen Hendry is? I know the name. I can't. The, play. He's, he's a, a snooker, snooker player. player. Oh, he's a snooker sure, player. Yeah, yeah. So 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 far the 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 celebrities but, revealed but are, all of these are twenty years out of date because I mean old Hendry, celebrities. Hendry was in the nineties. Mike kept left. He said it's in two thousand two. This is like. 20, 2002 20 years. Yeah, dude. Fucking hell. I mean, it's pretty funny. Fucking I mean, hell. So, this is really scraping the barrel. Yeah. These are not the mega celebrities that you kind of... Well, it's an ITV show, right? It is, but in previous yeah. seasons, it, it seems they've had... ITV so is seasons, firmly stuck in the 90s, unfortunately. We had Gloria Hunniford. Anyone remember Gloria Hunniford? Will Young. Who was We're probably big. bigger celebrities than these people. <laughs> I, don't, well, I don't know if that's true. I don't I, know no, if it I, is either. But. I mean, the thing is, the world has changed, right? And the world, you know, I nowadays, think the world has changed, and they've accepted Will Young. That's for sure. There like, are people but there like aren't, him like, now. People don't watch the same TV show anymore. Back back in the day, everyone, 20 million, 50 million people would watch these senders or whatever. It's mad. Everyone watched these things and everyone knew who these people were. But, yeah. but now we have our own communities where we're doing our own, we're in our own little world. We're with sexualizing Thomas the Tank Engine. In, in <laughs> but also we've had this scenes. massive uptick of generating celebrities through these reality TV shows. And, you know, a lot of these people come in you know, you'll. I'm sure some of these masked singers will be people who are like, "Oh, this was a guy who was on, a, yeah, on strictly Cali kept dancing or, or he was, made in Chelsea and, people think and stuff like that." People become like the oh, it's, it's a recycling. It's like we do a reality TV show with celebrities in, and the celebrities are just people from all the reality TV shows. It's like, oh, this guy finished fourth in The Bachelor. Yeah, this guy was like, do you know? Yeah, what I mean? like, yeah. Like, so how that, are these, they had a lot of that on this, the uh, on the most recent um, celebrity SAS. I'd say like 85 percent of them were just people from reality shows. People, yeah. people who I mean, just, it's much cheaper. After the reality it, it, show's it's... done, they they just go out and they look for yeah work. They, they become yeah. famous for being on other reality TV yeah, shows. Yeah, yeah. Like that, but I a... also think that if they're famous to you, then that's enough, right? Like sometimes, uh, and if they're funny and interesting and they're they're worth being a celebrity, they're, that's also enough. Like uh, in a way, right? Like you know, I've not watched all these reality TV shows, but if the funniest guy from that show is then a celebrity, actually, I don't mind. Like, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. if, if he then has some redeeming features that make the show more interesting. Fantastic. Um, I, I, there's been a lot of talk about the traitors, uh, which is the... Oh, the, yeah. The, yeah. The I remember, I remember they, they were advertising that a lot during the World Cup, but I never watched it. I've heard that it's actually pretty good, but I just... Um, Lots of people have watched it now. The UK one was good. Yeah. The US one is is a completely different vibe, right. and I don't recommend it. A Big Brother was the same. Yeah. I don't know if you remember when Big Brother was on and popular the u.s big brother was uh was completely different like they were allowed it's a, to it's a really mean vibe they were allowed to game the uh, the game they were allowed to to make strategies they were allowed to talk about the the actual game side of big brother whereas the uk one they weren't allowed like it was so i, I think really the thing meant is to be more of an the, experiment the american you know? audience certainly the way the american tv shows are made they want to force the drama immediately yeah whereas with the, the uk one you felt that these were actually people that really were in a situation where they just didn't know what to do and the drama came from that whereas in the us when they're like right we want to get a bunch of assholes in here yeah. we're gonna be assholes to each other people will love it like that's pretty much how they did it. i feel like the american side wants 
wants the drama straight away. And I, I feel like the UK side is more interested in just humiliating people and letting them do that <laughs> naturally themselves. Sort yeah. of thing, you know. Also, there are famous people on the the US one. Yeah. Like, no. They, yeah. There have they, been. They yeah. didn't have any in the UK when it was just all a bunch of bunch of regular people. Yeah. Uh, but so l- listen to the previous season of Mars Singer. And this is not. We've been through this though. We no, went no, through but, this but before. But this is not the kind of people that you're talking about, who was famous just for being on TV. I know. I know. They, they found a, they found a better cast for sure. Yeah, but they'll get there this season. Give it a chance. I'm just. Saying. <laughs> we only had four. Four on. Sorry, I didn't realise we were defend. Don't, don't be so defensive about the Mars Singer. I will be defensive. I'm, I'm, I'm on the Mars Singer really? fandom. I'm on the Discord. I'm, 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 all I'm actually the lead mod in the Masked Singer. I read it. Um, sub subreddit. So we had a day of filming, and afterwards, uh, me and Boba uh, came back to the uh, to the office, and because we 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 frozen to death, and we had like a uh, some noodles, and we watched. Who else was there? Mango was there. A few other people were there, and we watched the floor is lava. No, <laughs> oh, what yeah. a show! My, my right? son what loves that show. one. Yeah. Which honestly, I didn't think I was like, what's this? It was like a family show, but man. It's done. It's so bright and funny. That set must just cost so much to make, though, because it, it, basically it's a set built on top of a swimming pool, right? With a lot of food yeah, coloring. Yeah, it's yeah. insane. That it's, is a hell of a show, I'm telling you. It's a really fun show and I, I really wholesome. And it feels like, you know, they've got like three teachers who are doing their best versus, you know, a sort of family who's doing their best. And it, it, they've added, you can't tell, but the, the Foley work is great of them yeah. like slapping on the floor yeah. like slipping off yeah. like it's really well done like you wouldn't notice if you weren't n- l- looking for it but also don't yeah, the it's... people when they fall in like play up to the whole i'm in lava thing like yes I'm, they they're like, like, they're ah! like... <laughs> <laughs> so they do a little bit of video editing i can tell because uh, as soon as someone goes under the water they disappear right like right. it's very quickly like you can tell they're being masked out as soon as they've gone in the lava right which is cool and, and and then they they have obviously pause the filming, get the guy out of the swimming pool, and then tell the, the, it's a small detail. The, the, the family members who were left, you know, scream <laughs> yeah, about your all. your loved one falling it's in love. It's a small detail, but I think it's important. Like I I imagine that people who go on those like um you know like those Civil War uh you know recreation weekends or whatever you know like when they when they recreate the battles and and do like some RP and stuff like that. I I feel like an important part of that is if you get shot. Uh, you have to like lay down and pretend to be dead be or wounded, that. right? Yeah, they'd have to like, come to, and finish because yeah. it would suck if you, if you just shot somebody and then they just like sort of walked away. Yeah, and then went like to paintball. sit down to go get a coffee or walk well, okay, well, J- out. I always say in paintball when you get Absolutely. shot in paintball, I want you to drop yeah, dead yeah. as if you've been. Yeah, like, I want the yeah, immersion, be great. right? Like definitely commit. I, I anyway, I I think the show. I watched, we watched like three episodes, and I I honestly like enjoyed it more than I thought I would because it ju- it just felt like. Everyone was relatively wholesome, getting involved. It was like it was like the kind of the the fun the fun teachers, you know, who were there, kind of trying to do their best on this this show, but ending up like sl- <laughs> not injuring themselves, but doing these awkward jumps to like try and get to this awkward shaped thing. Um, man, so no, I I, I I rate it actually. If you wanna, if you want just a family friendly sh- shit show, it sounds like you two are already on the wagon. Uh, with the well, with the, we watch. We watch, I love that. Show. I have seen love it a couple of times. My uh, my yeah. kids also like this other one. It's like uh, I, I can't remember what it's called, but basically, people make desserts, but they look like real life objects, and then people have to guess which one is actually the dessert. So, like yes. for example, there'll be yeah. like a sand pail, and then. So somebody has to make a dessert that looks exactly like a sand pail and then they'll put it with five other sand pails and then there's like a panel that have to guess which one is the actual edible dessert mm. and the guy has to like cut it with a knife. I can't remember what the show is what called. What is a sand pail? It's like a bucket. Like a sand, oh, bucket. sand bucket. Bucket and spade. Yeah, right. Oh, a bucket yeah. and spade, yeah. Or, you know, okay. there's like a... I think one of the episodes I watched was was definitely beach themed because there was like a conch and like some other beach stuff. Yes. But, uh, yes. but there's all sorts of different ones. And uh, that is... It's uh, this stuff's. Uh, it's not it the feels, greatest show, feel, honestly. It, honestly, but... it's, it's feel good though, right? Like it's, it's, Amer- it's very American shot. Yeah, um, it doesn't make me feel great. It's on, you know. It's like <laughs> it's okay. I I honestly I think I'd really enjoyed watching it with random fucking people in the office. Yeah, well, like, I think anything is I fine if just... you're watching it with people and like it's like the same way that me and my wife watch Married at First Sight, The Apprentice. Like we're watching it together and we're making fun of people and we're having a laugh and and that in itself makes the show fun. But I wouldn't just seriously 
plow through seasons of that show on my own oh, like and, no, and be like a, you know a captive member of the audience or whatever i would just i would give up almost immediately mm. like no the whole act I of mean, watching the, yeah. it with some someone is what makes the show good well this you know? is one thing i've tried to do more of this year was my news resolution was trying to do more like socially like days of recording so you know i i and all days of like uh, playing a game with 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 friends and so I played um, the Europa Universalis board game at the weekend, which was oh, very tedious. Oh, yeah, I bet. God, <laughs> I mean, the, the game itself can be God was a, nightmare. A, bit, a bit tedious. Um, so, yeah. I was literally in the rule in the in the sixty page rule book for the whole for the whole six hours. Yeah. It was it was rough. Bearing in mind, I'd done a I'd done a lot of work going in as well. That was hard, and um, I had another a couple of days where we did, you know, full days of like playing games or doing recordings and things, and and it's been. It's been really nice to to do that actually um, for a change, but but yeah, like being able to watch different like stuff on my own. I watched Andor. Yeah, that's meant to be really oh, good. What a Andor, show! Yeah. What a show! I haven't seen it, but it's what, did really think, what did you think, Lewis? What did you? I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, like it it's, it's so Star good. Wars, but without all the the unnecessary lightsabers and trimmings and garbage that it would just felt like really was, uh, good was jar jar binks in it i don't know maybe not even a background shot i don't think he wasn't um, in it okay. there was no. a lot of that sort of stuff there was so there was one set of characters who i thought jumped out as being completely out of place which was those weird big creatures by the lake the sort of court Andor and the other guy and then you're right that you're right. mrs f was like i hate this <laughs> when we were watching this. <laughs> that was weird but that felt really out of place but but it was a really really good show that one bit was like jarringly too that was almost like they were showing if we had more of the lucas shit it would be like this do you right. want this and everybody was like this sucks and they were like then we'll leave like they literally left it was like a short scene just to show you what the show could have been that's what it felt right. like to me wow yeah i suppose you could you can spin that spin that in your mind in your, I, that's in your head how i Cannon. spun it that's how it's a bad bit in a good show we've been talking yeah. about tv almost the whole time but i still have some things to mention almost uh before we wrap up about tv other tv i've been watching that's not kids related i watched a really nice documentary on the proclaimers which who i know of but i don't know okay. much about and uh it was really good Where really interesting go? You know, they, no get, gonna be they, they, they are, are, would you, would you, would you consider the Proclaimers a punk band? I think originally they were. They certainly dressed like it. No, what no, I think they're rock. It's, uh, it, it's, it's weird. I never thought of them as a punk band, but a lot of what they are and stand for kind of fit into the, into the ethos of, uh, of punk, which is interesting. Okay. Um, so if you don't know. Unapologetically Scottish. I would yeah. Say. It, yeah. And, uh, it's, it's, it's super interesting if you, if you, you, if you want to know more about the Proclaimers and if you like some of their more famous songs or whatever, I, I, another thing that was quite nice about them and it mentions in the uh, in the documentary, um, they say like, oh, you know, when you do a show, um, are you a band that will just do new material? Like, are, do you get sick of uh, of doing the old stuff or or what? And they're like, oh, God, no. It's like it, we 500 miles every show. We have to. She, oh, yeah. he, they said we're not famous enough to be like that about our music like we know also, it's a we know that people turn banger. up there because they want to hear that song more so than any other because that's the only song we, that only we, anyone's ever heard we of, play of the it yeah yeah and if they didn't play it yeah I, but you do hear that from people consistently from bands who are sick of the song that made them famous yes and they hate playing it and they will refuse to play yeah. it. yeah and they they're embarrassed about it and they've they've kind of they're like you know that's not who I am now. No, yeah. Do you know what I mean like like they really do have this? It's very well. I guess it's it's common to hear that, right? Yeah. I I, I suppose I suppose. But for as many as do that, there are as many that are willing to play. Sure. And but do. I, I just so, I right? just found that I just I found them very straightforward. Really like not like no uh you know they 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 weren't like these like overly charismatic like you, you know like you think that there's something going on behind the scenes they're very much like what you see is what you get but in like the nicest way like they they just seem like really nice guys who have just really re really passionate about the stuff that they do and they just keep going and they enjoy it still and uh it, it's just just really interesting like uh a lot of it they just did by themselves they didn't fit into any of the norms at the time they just did their own thing they would not be swayed sort of thing and it's just uh you can see when they first mentioned like proclaimers and punk at the same time it's like come on there's no way but then after watching the documentary it's like i can see it now like i can see how people yeah. could consider them that because 
of just everything that they stood for and um and and just how so they they're, operated they're, they're, they definitely um I, I i knew letter from america which is a great song yeah, yeah. when you go will you send back <laughs> a letter hell. from america yeah, that's, yeah, a, great that's song. a great song sure yeah. and then i've heard that one i'm on my way is another song I'm on my this way, yeah. beat, uh, sorry this is when you're okay fine i've heard that as well yeah. all right p flex you made your point I've heard of Just, uh, We have song. a lot of Scottish listeners, and as a as a Forsyth, I'll not hear anything about the Proclaimers other than praise. One of their songs, <laughs> I, it's, uh, apologies, because I can't remember the name of it, is a uh, big football chant as well for... I can't remember the the club. Is that you you're going home in a fucking ambulance? No, it it's I, oh. I can't remember the, the the club's name, but they they're they're big supporters of the club and they they love the fact that when they go watch a match that uh that mm. that their song is is sung by all these people that they, you know, they they like their town, like they they yeah. they know people and they just think it's incredible that they've made this song and it's now a huge part of like watching football. Sunshine and, on Leaf. That's the one, yeah. That's the one. It's like it, sure. like it, it's a, it's quite a slow song but it just works really well as a hibernian fc as a uh, as hibs. a football that's chant hibs. Uh, yeah. Hib. yeah hibs and hearts that's yeah. the edinburgh teams yeah hibs and is hearts. it mm, interesting yeah, yeah. could it, be wrong apologies su- Scottish just fans, su- but I super I'm interesting uh, documentary and not long it's like an hour long but uh, if you want to know more about them, I, I definitely recommend it. It's a really, really interesting one. Inter- that is, I won't watch it, but uh, thank you for the <laughs> recommendation. Oh, man. I, uh, you know what? Just to say, uh, I have had You an wouldn't interesting... walk 500 miles to watch that documentary? <laughs> Would you send me a letter from America, though, is the question. I, if you if you are You're on your way I don't, I don't in the opposite direction because you don't want to know if anything more about, about the it, I would. Okay. If you, you wrote me a song about when it, When you I go, would. will you text me a WhatsApp <laughs> from America? <laughs> <laughs> to let uh, you know that you've landed safely. <laughs> and then some pictures of your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and how many times you farted today? <laughs> this is from Matt says that we should do a future one of our filler episodes, our best of list. He should, we should do best technological advancement. Uh, which sounds oh, exactly like yeah. the kind of dog shit we would do. So yeah, that yeah. Sound about That's right. That's a good idea. Okay, I'll Matt. put that on the list. Very good idea. Right, we'll do that one next. Top ten technological right. advances. Thank you. Yeah. Shout out to Matt for the well uh, for Matt. big ups to Matt. Good, That's good job. Big ups. All right, we're done. Thank you for listening, everyone. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Bye. Right. Peace. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.